Hi everyone. So you have just cleared NEET PG and you are thinking if you should take up radiology. So let's see who radiology is for. The lifestyle, the job opportunities in India and abroad, the money and if it is the right career for you. So radiology should be taken up by a person who likes reading. Because again you have to read the majority of the branches in medicine and in all the super specialty branches also. Like for example one day a neurologist or a neurosurgeon will tell you uh, okay, what is, what is the lesion in the brain, what could it be. So you need to have a decent knowledge in both neurology and neurosurgery to find uh, which neurological disease it is or which tumor it is whether it's an infection or not. One day an orthopedician will send you a lesion in the bone. And seeing the x-ray, CT, MRI, you have to tell whether it is an infection or whether it is a tumor. If it is a tumor, what is the extent, if it is invasive, how invasive it is, whether it is malignant or benign. And you have to pinpoint a diagnosis. Or if you are not able to pinpoint a diagnosis, at least you should tell a close differential diagnosis of two or three diagnoses. So I feel you have to have a decent knowledge in all the specialities and super specialities of medicine to be a good radiologist. And basically, um, a person who enjoys problem solving and pattern recognition can enjoy radiology. And you should have a lot of patience because you should go for these subtle details in a CT scan or an MRI to find the actual diagnosis. Or you might miss out on many findings. A person who really likes technology will really enjoy radiology because you'll be closely working with a lot of advanced equipments and software in this branch. Another one is, I would say, work-life balance. Because uh, radiology is one of the few branches that re gives you a really good work-life balance. And suppose after doing radiology, you're missing a bit of a clinical touch or um, you want to do procedures and you don't want to do a hardcore surgical branch, then you can take up interventional radiology as your super specialty after radiology. So I would say during residency, it's going to be very busy. Definitely uh, that how busy it is, it will depend on the institute and the workload and the number of postgraduates. Because the more caseload there is and the less number of postgraduates, your work is eventually going to be more tough. So you will have routine duties and you will have night duties and holiday duties. So residency is pretty hectic. But uh, let's say whether it's another branch other than radiology. Uh, if it's another residency in another branch, as you go from first year to second year to third year, your effective work becomes less uh, and your quality increases, the quality of your work increases, your responsibility increases and the amount of time you sleep also increases as you go from first year to second year to third year in all branches and even in radiology. But the problem with the radiology is when you come as a first year, you don't know much. You have come to a brand new branch where you have no clue. So you're not very useful in the department. So I would say by the end of first year, you will learn basics of USG, CT and MRI. So it is in second year where you learn maximum. And it is in third year where you become the most productive person in the department. So in the department, everybody needs you to report. Whether it's a consultant or a professor, they want you to draft for them, report for them and even sign off for them. So I would say the work actually increases in third year and third year will be the most hectic part in radiology residency unlike in many other branches. Why? Because you have to do all the reporting, CT, MRI, USG, fluoro, interventions, everything. And then you have to prepare your thesis, learn for your theory exam and your practical exam. But I would say once you're done with your residency, the work is pretty good. Why? Because you can choose to work in a corporate or you can choose to work in a diagnostic center or you can start up your own venture. You can start up your own diagnostic center. So in these cases, in let's say in corporate, it is usually nine to five. But I would say whether it, if it is in, um, let's say it's a um, diagnostic center. So you can choose your timings, whether it's nine to one, one to four, six to eight. You can choose the number of hours or the cases you sign off or the cases you do on USG. So there is a lot of uh, comfort in that. And I would say the money is also pretty good in this. But however, you if you take up intervention radiology, I would say it will be pretty hectic. Why? Because you have a lot of routine cases. You have a lot of emergencies. Because you have a stroke in the night, you have to wake up and come for a mechanical thrombectomy. Or you have to come for an aneurysm coiling. Or there is an emergency bleeder in the abdomen. You have to come and you have to do the embolization of the bleeder. So I would say interventional radiology becomes a surgical branch and it becomes pretty hectic after your residency also. However, radiology is uh, pretty good in that way. 
So early in your career, you can earn around 1.5 to 2 lakhs in a corporate hospital and you can earn around 2 to 2.5 lakhs in a diagnostic center. This is immediately after you pass out your MD or a DNB. And definitely as years go, your salary also will increase. So basically in tier 1 city, this is your salary. In tier 2 city, you can add 1 lakh to each of these. And in a tier 3 city, you can add 2 lakhs to each of these per month. So basically what I would say is uh, compared to a surgical or a medical branch, uh, it may, radiology actually has a plateau as you as you go in after maybe 10 years you have a plateau because uh, radiology doesn't value um, seniority that much uh, or experience that much compared to a surgical branch because in surgical branch uh, seniority is everything and the more you become better or skilled or you know the years you spend in this and the more surgeries you do you get um, you get paid much more so that is one issue with radiology and you, one of the few ways you can break it would be, you know, uh, start your own diagnostic center, your own venture, do start a tele-radiology company, or you can take up intervention radiology because intervention radiology is again a surgical branch. So that has more value for experience and your surgical experience. Uh, so when we talk about opportunities abroad, uh, definitely one option is UK. You will have to clear your FRCR and uh, then you can apply for GMC registration and you can work as a registrar and then become a consultant there in UK. So that's a good option. But UK, again, you, have, you get a government NHS salary that is based on the experience you have. So it is not very rewarding, I would say, because the expense there is more. So in that way, not much rewarding. Another one is US, but for US, you have to give your US Emily. Once you're done with US Emily, you have to do your re-residency in radiology. Or another one is a four-year alternate pathway where you have to do a four-year of fellowship in the same institute and you will get to write the ABR exam and then you can become a radiologist in US. But uh, so the, the rewards in US is much more compared to rest of the world. So that's a good option. But again, you will have to give your assembly and go through all this. Another one is, um, um, you know, UAE. So there, um, even with your Indian degree, you can go and work. If you have FRCR or if you have a DM in intervention radiology, your pay will be much more. So if you talk about advantages, I would say definitely there is a good need of radiologists wherever you go, whether it's tier one, tier two or tier three city. So job will never be an issue. And uh, the salary is also uh, pretty good initially and also later. Uh, and another option would be you have an option to go into intervention radiology. Suppose you get bored in radiology or you want to do something more or different, you can always venture into intervention radiology as a super speciality. And the most important thing is uh, radiology has a great work-life balance. I think that is the most important thing. So when we talk about disadvantages, I would say um, the most important one is uh, that you will lose the clinical touch because we all became a doctor to interact with patients, take care of them and solve their problems. So in radiology, uh, you have much less clinical interaction with patients. Maximum will be during ultrasounds or in a CT and MRI, you take a clinical history. So that's the maximum you get. So again, you can, um, you can have the clinical interaction with patients if you take up intervention radiology. So that is uh, one negative thing. Another one, I would say the income plateau after 10 years. Then another one is AI. So AI is affecting jobs in all the fields, not just in medicine. But I feel in medicine, I think it can affect radiology uh, far earlier than other branches. So I don't know. I can't tell you how, how much it will affect or how it will change it. But I would say at least for the next 10 to 15 years, I would say AI will help radiologists pick up better and report better. That's what I feel. Uh, it can never completely um, replace a radiologist. It can help evolve the field into a better field. That's what I feel. Radiology is not just about sitting in a dark room. It's much more than that. You are actually a doctor's doctor because you really contribute a lot in the hospital because each and every diagnosis that is made in the hospital that a clinician makes is uh, contributed by radiology to a great extent. And um, I would say if you like tech, if you like problem solving, a good work-life balance and uh, good money in long term, I would say radiology is for you. And also uh, radiology is the way to become an intervention radiologist if that's what you want. So I hope this video has helped you. Thank you.